Hi there, I'm Justin with Road Choice Truck Parts and welcome to another chapter in our Clutch Technical Training Series. This program will be especially helpful because it provides a handy guide to clutch troubleshooting. I'm going to give you a checklist of steps for evaluating clutch condition, finding causes of problems, and making proper corrections. In step one, we're basically looking for trouble, and the best way to find it is by visually inspecting the clutch system. Here are a few items you'll want to look for. Is there any contamination on the clutch? Are there any missing or broken pieces? Are the mounting bolts tightened correctly? Is there anything causing the linkage or fork to bind? Step two requires a thorough check of clutch operation, asking these questions. Is the clutch slipping? Does the clutch release? Does the clutch engage and disengage smoothly? Does the clutch make a noise while engaged or while disengaged? Step three looks at recommended settings and performance so that you can make the appropriate corrections. Is the clutch adjusted properly? There should be a half inch to five eighths inch from the bearing to the clutch cover. There should be a half inch to nine sixteenths inch from the bearing to the clutch brake. You'll also need an eighth inch free travel with mechanical linkage. Is the clutch brake missing? Are the tabs broken off? Is a torque limiting brake installed? Can it be turned using channel locks or by hand? Does the fork pull the bearing a minimum of a half an inch? Is the clutch brake squeezed properly? Will a ten thousandths of an inch feeler gauge between the bearing and brake stay with the clutch pedal depressed? By carefully proceeding through those three steps, you'll have a quick and efficient way to troubleshoot most clutch problems. Simply ask each question and either fix the issue or move on, depending on the answer. There are three common problems that require a deeper level of troubleshooting. Slipping, noise, and release. Let's go through the possible causes and corrections for each one. A slipping clutch means that full engine power isn't reaching the transmission. Here are the top seven causes of slipping and how to fix them. The first probable cause is incorrect clutch adjustment. To fix that, just readjust per the installation instructions. Another probable cause is the release mechanism binding. To correct this, check the release mechanism and linkage and lubricate if necessary. A third probable cause is grease or oil on the clutch facing. To correct, simply replace with a new clutch assembly and find and repair the cause of the grease or oil contamination. Another cause is worn clutch facings. Replace with a new clutch assembly to correct that issue. The next probable cause is an under clutch. Correct this by reviewing the application to ensure that proper clutch was installed. Another probable cause is the flywheel being out of spec. To remedy this, check the flywheel for proper dimension and repair or replace as needed. The last probable cause for a slipping clutch is the driver's foot resting on the clutch pedal. Avoid using the clutch pedal as a footrest to correct this problem. A noisy clutch may show up as a grinding sound and extra vibrations. Here's what to look for and what to do about it. If the problem is incorrect clutch adjustment, you'll need to readjust per instructions. When the clutch lacks lubricant or is damaged, then lubricate or replace the clutch assembly. If the problem is that the flywheel pilot bearing lacks lubricant or is damaged, correct it by replacing it with a new bearing. If the release fork is hitting the cover assembly at full release position, check the fork and linkage for wear and ensure proper adjustment. If there is a worn linkage system, check the linkage, the cross shaft, cross shaft bushings and fork and repair or replace as appropriate. If the flywheel is out of spec, check the flywheel for proper dimensions and repair or replace as needed. An early symptom of poor clutch release is a grinding sound and it's hard to get it into gear. Here are the likely causes of poor release and how to correct them. If the clutch adjustment is not correct, then recheck adjustment per installation instructions. When the flywheel pilot bearing is bound in the flywheel or on the input shaft, the best plan of action is to replace the pilot bearing. 
Ensure there is proper seating in the flywheel and proper tolerance to the input shaft. If there is a damaged clutch release bearing, simply replace it with a new clutch assembly. When the clutch release shaft is projecting through the release fork, reposition the release shaft so it doesn't project. Check the cross shaft bushings, cross shafts, and release fork for wear. If the release fork is hitting the cover assembly at full release position, check the fork and linkage for wear and ensure proper adjustment. If the clutch brake is worn, damaged, or missing, simply replace it. If the clutch brake is not fully squeezed, then adjust proper brake squeeze and verify by using a ten thousandths of an inch feeler gauge. If the pressure plate is not retracting fully, then verify that the release bearing is being pulled a minimum of half an inch. When the splines are worn on the input shaft of the transmission, then replace the input shaft and check the disc hubs for excess wear. If the flywheel is out of spec, check the flywheel for proper dimensions and repair or replace as appropriate. Now this applies to 14 inch angle spring two plate pot style assemblies only. If the intermediate plate is sticking on the drive lugs, then check that the drive pins are 90 degrees to the flywheel surface and that there's a minimum six thousandths of an inch clearance between the drive pins and the center plate slots. All of these troubleshooting steps for operation and adjustment can really save you time when you're evaluating or installing a clutch. The faster you find the problems, the faster you find the right solutions. Today we've covered many of the common symptoms that could affect clutch performance and longevity. There are many potential repair options available for any given situation. So keep in mind, your corrective actions may vary from what we covered in this video. Well, that's it for this chapter. I hope you'll explore the other chapters in this clutch technical training series to make sure your clutch knowledge is up to date. You'll find all the parts information you need at roadchoice.com. And you can always contact us directly with questions about what you've learned here. This is Justin for Road Choice Truck Parts, and I'll see you next time.